So I am back to work some more on my encrusted embroidery piece and I thought I would just uh, do a few things on camera because I've been getting some questions. First off, I decided how I was going to finish it off, which told me that I needed to add some more encrusting out to the edges and then I can fill in with other stitches. So what I did in a few places, okay, here I just took a ring and tacked it down and then I'll be able to uh, wrap it with stitch. And then somewhere else, okay, over here, I was able to slide a little ring underneath and I will do some stitches around that. Here I was able to slide a bottle cap under and just stitch around to hold it down. Here I took a button and just wrapped it with some fabric. You're not going to see any of this when I'm done, but I just wrapped it with some fabric and then just tacked it down. It was an ugly button and this way I can cover it with stuff. <laughs> Who knows what. This was a ring that had really sharp edges. I don't know what it was for, but it was this kind of a ring and I just had a small piece of white yarn so I started wrapping it like crazy and I'm thinking maybe I need to add some more white or I'm probably going to go over it's just tacked down right now so I'm probably going to go over it with some more stitches and then here I just had a bunch of scrap fabric that was left from when I cut this uh, down to the right size so I just kind of wadded it up and made a little hill there so I can stitch over it uh, what a, oh and then over here all the little threads that you cut off the back, you know, when you're done stitching, I just kind of, you know, did this back and forth and made a little pile and then stitched them down and then I'll keep stitching over that and that gives me some other height. So really, it doesn't have to be difficult to get some height in here. And so I just, I kind of wanted to explore a few things and then I'll um, answer a few questions. So the white here made me think, well, maybe I want to do some more white. And I had this lacy trim it's got little pearls it seems like that would go with the encrusting so i could kind of line my my thing with it i could go around my bottle cap with it i could just couch it down all around or i could just cut little tiny pieces of it and stitch it down but it just it it doesn't feel like it belongs on there but those are some options i also had this white and gold um, it's kind of a stiff ribbon and so I could couch that maybe all around but again it just it didn't feel right so I'm not going to do that. I, so I think what I'm going to do on the white is do another color of stitch over the top of it. So this is a real heavy yarn so if I take a thinner pearl eight in a slightly different color and I don't have to cover the whole thing but I can break it up a little bit because I do have some white knots and things in here. Then I saw this. This was a really neat little chenille trim that I had and I thought that might add some neat little texture so I might cut some pieces of that off. I also had these wool locks which looked even better. So I might cut some of those off and put on there. I, you know you could Maybe if I was starting over on a new one, I might couch this down first and then do other stuff, but I could always cut little pieces off. Then I have these, they're kind of like dreads, I guess. It's just some felted, you know, unevenly felted yarn. And that would add some neat texture as well. And I have to decide, do I want to, see this almost mimics that, so I could maybe do something like that over here. And I probably wouldn't do a big old long couching thing. I would probably just do small pieces. And then I've got this yarn that is more in this creamy thing. And I, I might play with that. I don't know. Also brought out my beads. So I have lots of, of pearls from jewelry that I had gotten at thrift stores over the years. So I'm definitely going to be putting, you can even see them in there, but they definitely uh, go with this idea. And I have these really big, loopy French knots. I take these little tiny guys and nestle them in the knot. But I think before I start doing my beads, I would just do a few stitches here and make some decisions about adding some of this other texture on here. I do think I like this. Yeah, I think I'm going to just cut a few pieces of that to stitch down. No rhyme, no reason. I can just mix it in with the bullion knots. Yeah, so I think that'll add 
something, but I think we want to go the other way. I do like this. I'm not sure where to put it, though. Maybe it goes with. And I think this is one of those things I might need to have planned ahead of time. Unless I want to go around. Well, that might be something to do. If I put it around here, it's sort of balancing something that's really high over there. So I don't want to get too bogged down in this because I think the rest of the fun is going to come from all the beads. So I'm just going to couch this down probably rather loosely to start and then I can decide how I want to come back. I just kind of want to get it in place so as I'm working it's not going to go sliding off. Now a lot of these things like here are things I've tried doing and I didn't have enough space on the hoop or I just I made a mistake and I'm like okay I'm just going to keep covering it with more knots or satiny stitch. You can you know any kind of a mistake that you make just consider it as a padding for a padded satin stitch because they're not really mistakes. They're deviations, but they're not mistakes because there are no rules, right? I mean, there's only mistakes if there's only one way of doing something. And if there are multiple ways of doing something, then you can't view it as a mistake. It's just a deviation. You made an adjustment to your plan. I make adjustments all the time because, you know, I'm completely pretty much self-taught except for the, the gal when I was a kid that tried to teach me and traumatized me with regard to the backside of my embroidery. But, you know, I put it away for 40 years. Coming back to it now, I just, um, I've got a different attitude about it. There are no rules. There's nothing I can do wrong. I just make adjustments and look at it as something that I'm learning. Hmm, maybe this one wants to twist kind of like a bullion. You know, and I could decide afterwards that this is just padding again for a satin stitch. You know, it doesn't have to be something that I leave as it is. At the moment, I think that's what I'm going to do, but maybe I'm not. I think the best art happens not from having a plan, but from starting and carrying on. That's what makes art. Having a plan, you know, makes you go get your materials out of your studio. Makes you sit down and decide, you know, well, okay, I kind of want to work on some embroidery. I want to make a painting. That, that's all a plan does. A plan doesn't make the art. Sitting down and picking up your needle and thread grabbing your paintbrush, that's what makes art. And I am just traveling across the back of my fabric, all those no-nos. You know, I've got lots of loose stuff on the back. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. It's fine if you want to be precise. For some people, being precise uh, adds another level to their creativity. They love it. It gets them all excited and knowing that they can be very precise about things. Um, it's just not me, and if I don't enjoy it, you, if you've watched any of my stuff before, you know if I'm not having a good time, I'm not going to keep on doing it. Life is too short of this I know, and things can happen, things can change so fast. Yeah, it just adds a little bit more squiggly. I might come back in later and add some more over here. I'm not sure. Okay, and because I've got a little bit of thread left, I know I can make a few knots, and because this is just a pile of loose threads, I can come up right in the middle of that. I mean, that's what's nice about using loose threads as your padding. You can stitch right through it, no problem. I can make, you know, loose knots, precise knots, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pile all over these threads. I'm just going to pile up the knots. And really, I think it's the beads that are going to just really pull this all together. Plus, when I put it over um, the finishing form, that's going to be kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So if you are giving encrusted embroidery, or I guess it's also called encrusted calico, I'm not quite sure where the name came from, um, but if you're giving it a try, let me know and tag me so I can go look at what it is that you're working on because I get all excited to see what other people are doing, especially if they've, they've been a little bit inspired by something that I'm doing. You know, we all borrow ideas from one another. If we know where we got the idea, it's nice if we can, you know, mention it. But sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we see something and, you know, we don't do anything with it right away and then, you know, Five years later, we're like, oh, wow, I'm going to do that such and such. And you didn't make a note of it. You know, and that happens. Um, nobody can yell at you for that. But all I'm saying is if you do know somebody that inspired you, I know Philippa over at Stitching Always inspired me to do this. She was the first person I saw doing this. And then that led me down the rabbit hole of more things about encrusted embroidery. So I'm not even going to try and keep my circle shape here. I want things to be a little less precise because that's just my style. Okay, the question I got asked a lot was how do I stitch into the top of these, especially since these are hard. 
Uh, some of them are soft, uh, like this one is a little softer because it's got some padding. And so I did, when I put my two pieces of fabric together, I did put some fabric um, in between there. I put some t-shirt fabric. It wasn't enough. So you might want to put something thicker like some quilt wadding or even just a pile of fiber fill or wrap your fabric in some padding or wrap your fabric, wrap your item in some padding before you trap it. But you can still get around that, okay? This is very hard. It's just a bottle cap. There's no padding or anything in there. You can very carefully slide your needle just right underneath there. And that's all you have to do. You slide your needle under that fabric and then you can make your things. That is all I do is I just slide my needle underneath. The other thing you can do is you can do any kind of a crisscross thing. So like here I started to do a little bit of a woven thing and I started at the bottom instead of at the top. But again I had my spokes. I don't know if you can see them here. Some spokes kind of like this. And then I just started going under the fabric and covering up the spokes to get some variety. This one I decided not to do that with. Um, this one, again, hear that? It's very hard. All I do, um, let's come over here on one of these. Now, one thing that this project has taught me is that I need to practice my stitches. You know, I need to, if I'm going to do some of these woven stitches, I need to just give myself some more practice. Okay, so I made my knot over here on the side. Now, when I come in, I'm just sliding my needle right underneath what's existing. Now I'm going to come up higher at the top. I'm going to do it again. I'm up high at the top. I made my little knot. I'm going to come in and each time I slide underneath the existing stitching, I'm moving my way up the trapped item. That's all there is to it. For those of you that asked, I hope that answers your question. That's all there is to it. If you know more stitches, you could do different stitches on there. Um, I find that the, the woven pico stuff is kind of hard to do that way, but maybe you would be better at it than I would. Maybe it would be good if it was, if you didn't have all this weaving on top, like on this one, maybe I'll try that and see if I can do a, a woven one on top of here. But I'm content to cover them with French knots and you could do more perfect knots. My knots always seem to be really loose because that's what makes me happy. But that's all there is to it. And if you make a goof, remember, just use it as a padded satin stitch and just go over it. And I think that's what I'm going to do over here. That's what I did here. I don't remember how I goofed, but um, I might have been trying to do a buttonhole bar and messed up. So I said, oh, well, heck with it. I'm just going to make that a nice padded satin stitch. And the only thing that I'm frustrated with myself about on that is that I did it so close to this. And that's okay, too. Because once I get knots and beads in there, you're not going to notice it. This is the way I talk to myself while I'm working. And then I just say, well, okay, what can we do to alter what we just did and we're not happy with? How can we change it up? That's all there is to it.